All right, hello everyone and welcome back. So today we are going over yet another example of drawing shear force and bending moment diagrams. This time it's just a simply supported beam with all three types of loads. So distributed a point load and then an external moment applied at the midpoint. Well, not the midpoint, but whoops, forgot to add dimensions here. Hopefully, let's make this um, 12 meters four meters and then four meters and we'll shift this down okay sorry about that so let's without further ado just go for the problem all right first thing to do is find the reactions right sum of forces in the y direction right equals zero and then we have um a y right as our first reaction a y and then we have b y as our second reaction right so a y plus b y and then minus 12 times 2 from the distributed load, right, which um, equals 24, and then minus 13.5, right, and then that should be equal to 0, right, and then we can do a, we'll leave that there, and we can do a sum of forces, um, some moments, sorry, around point A to find one of those reactions, either A, Y, or um, B, Y, right. So first thing we got to look at is if we set the uh, um, set the point at A to uh, where we rotate about, we can do 2 times 12, that's from the distributed load, times 12 time, uh, divided by 2, which is this distance, right, from here to here, right, and then that equals 6, right, and then plus 40, right, this is from the external moment being applied counterclockwise and since counterclockwise we defined as positive we're just adding that right well, then this should be negative sorry okay and then minus 13.5 right times 12 plus 4 which is 16 this distance over here right and then finally um plus 20 by right because by is going upwards and it's 20 away from a okay and that finally equals zero all right so just plug that into your calculator let's see um we have two times 12 times uh, 12 times six right it's equal to negative 144 plus 40 minus 13.5 times 16 right 216 and plus 20 by equals 0 right so negative uh, 144 plus 40 minus 216 right that equals 20 by equals 320 so by would then equal negative 16 okay so not negative 16 sorry positive 16 well there you go okay so since uh by equals positive 16 right we can just plug that in say a y right equals the remainder of that 16 minus 24 minus 13.5 and we cut a y equals uh, 21.5 kilo. Okay, so that was just from the sum of forces equations, right? So now we have our reactions. It's quite simple to solve, right? A y equals 21.5 and b y equals 16, right? So first thing we do, shear force diagram. Okay. How does the shear force diagram work? Uh, simple enough. When we see a force that's going up, we go up with it, right? That's 21.5. Okay, that's from the reaction. Okay, now it decreases by a total of 24, right? Because that's 12, 12 times 2, right? And since it's a rectangular, uniformly distributed load, that was a mouthful, but it basically means it's a rectangle. Rectangular distributed load, no like triangle uh, triangle nonsense over here, right? So 
minus 24 in total, right? Uh, that should get you um, 21.5 minus 24 is equal to negative 2.5, okay? That's at this point over here. And we'll draw a line, okay? So we know that it goes to negative 2.5 over here, right? And we can draw a line like that. Okay. Now, there's no there's no forces except for this rotational force in between here and the next point. So simply, just extend that over. Maybe I'll draw another line like this. There you go. Okay. Just extend that over, and it's still negative 2.5, right? And then finally. Mm, we have this 13.5 going down at this point, right? So negative 2.5 minus 13.5 equals 16, right? Negative 16. And nothing in between here. And then finally, the reaction at B brings us back to zero, okay? Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for the shear force diagram, okay? Bending moment diagram uh, will be a bit tricky, but there's just one thing you need to remember, but it's mostly just the same as always, all right? So first thing we need to do is we need to find these areas, okay? This one, this one, this one, and then this one, okay? So the first area, right, we can do, but in order to find the areas of these two triangles, right, we need to use similar triangles to kind of figure that out, okay? So imagine we call this distance right until it goes to zero. We call this x and one and then x2, for example, right? So we can say that because we see this triangle, one triangle, right, is 21.5 over x1, right? That's just the height of it and then the base of it, right? And then we can say that um, something that has the same slope, right, is this total of 12 meters. And then it's from here, all the way down here. Okay, so 21.5 plus 2.5, all right, because it's the distance from let me see if I can get a close up from here to this negative 2.5 over here. Okay, that has the same slope as 21 and then x1. Okay, so and since we know this distance right over here is 12 meters, right? The total height is 24, right? We can just simply set up an equation I'm saying x1 over 21.5 equals 12 over 24, right? Now uh, base divided by height equals base divided by height, right? And then finally we get that 21.5, 21.5 divided by two, right? This uh, x1 equals 10.75 meters, okay? This distance is 10.75 meters. This remaining distance would be 12 minus that, which equals to 1.25, all right? Now with those, we can continue to find the areas. And let me see if I can draw this in a different location. So we have this triangle as 21.5 uh, times the base of it, which is 10.75, right, times uh, a half because that's a triangle, right? So 21.5 times 10.75 times 0.5. And you should get approximately uh, 115.56, okay? That area there. And then this area, right? This area is negative 2.5. Uh, 2.5 times 1.25, which is that distance we just found, this one, right? Um, 
times a half uh, so we get negative as 1.56 for this area okay this might be a bit confusing it's a bit crowded okay and then the next area we'll go from here to here right that's 2.5 times 4 right 2.5 times 4 it's just 10 right negative 10 and then finally this area 16 times 4 is equal to 64 negative 64 okay that's your four areas okay now to draw a shear for a uh, bending moment diagram the rest is super simple right all you have to remember is um, starts at zero right no moment around the, the the support because it's not resisting any moments right and then we go up the first area because it's a positive area right 115.56 okay so it would look actually let me draw another line right from here to here it's still a positive area okay so 0 to 115.56 right so next right um, we have to that's up until this point right the second area is negative, right? So 115.56 minus 1.56, right? Because that's this small area right over here, okay? So we go down, um, go down to 114, right? That's a bit too much. The slightest of drops okay 114 right and then here's where it's tricky remember this 40 kilonewton meters we had here at the beginning of the problem all right we need to include it now because it's a moment right and this is the bending moment diagram okay question for you right does the does the graph drop or does it rise all right, I'll give you a second to think about this. Pause the video. Okay. If you answer drop, you are correct, right? Why is that, right? Because imagine if you cut the beam, right? And there is this moment that's over here, right? To balance it, or or maybe, maybe apply it over here, right? To balance it, you need something spinning in the opposite direction, right? If this is spinning counterclockwise you need something clockwise okay and since since due to the positive sign convention let me draw it again one two uh, three four right this moment this moment rotating counterclockwise is positive so if you need to add add a clockwise moment to resist this counterclockwise moment right you would need to have this this value right over here would be negative okay hopefully that made sense but we have 114 minus 40 that goes back to 74 whoa 74 all right and then that uh, minus rectangular area 10 so 64 right and then finally from 64 all the way down to 0 because it is this this last area we have there all right of course this drawing's kind of not to scale and my work was a bit messy this time but hopefully uh, you get the point that uh, you know mm, is slightly different from the problems we've worked on before but honestly with the same steps right if you think about it all we did we solve for reactions right and then we solve for reactions right and then we added the reactions here and here right and then we just follow the shear force diagram found the areas and whenever you have this triangle kind of thing going on here and you don't know use similar triangles it's very handy right and again it's this total height over here and then whichever smaller triangle you're using okay and then once we found the areas 
we go draw the bending moment diagrams. I've repeated this so many times, but I'll repeat it again. Larger area over here, steeper slope. Okay, lesser area, milder slope. That goes with the negative ones as well, but just the other way around. Okay, and then finally, when you see this applied moment, you can think about it how I did, or you can just remember that you know counterclockwise you drop. All right, that can also work. Okay. So, yeah, that's it for this example. Hopefully you found it helpful, and uh, I'll see you next video.